So Derek, um, why don't you tell me what we're doing today, other than brewing beer? Because that's what we're doing. That's right. We're drinking some coffee. We're drinking some coffee. Where's my coffee cup? Over there. Um, having a good time on a Saturday. It's Saturday. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. We're having some coffee. Right, but I think that's going to change shortly, isn't it? It is. And um, we're brewing a, a double IPA today. And I thought, why don't we drink an IPA? Now, you explain to me that you can have different types of IPAs. Oh, I thought you were going to say, explain to me why we're drinking coffee and then we're going to taste some beer. <laughs> Is there a reasoning behind that? No. Okay. <laughs> but you said the double and the triple and the single of the IPA is based on the alcohol content. In, well, in the um, it, it, it's based upon alcohol content, which then leads to your hop additions. So uh, you got your regular IPAs, which can be anywhere under 7.5% alcohol. Um, um, actually, that's yeah, no, that's not right. I, I, it might be right. I, I believe it's got to be under 1.075 specific gravity, somewhere under there. Once you reach above that, then you get into the imperial IPA, which can be your double IPA or triple IPA. Gotcha. The higher your specific gravity, the stronger your beer is going to be, which then means for your IPAs you could add more hops to balance out the malt and alcohol with the bitterness and the awesome flavor of the hops. And that makes a great IPA. And that makes a great IPA. Because what happens is if you just stick to your normal hop additions of 60 or 90, it's 90, 60, 30, and then a five minute addition, you're going to wind up with a, sure it'll taste sort of good with the hops, but you're not going to get the full <clears throat> yep, kick. I don't know what that was. What was that? <clears throat> I don't know. It's like <laughs> I'm in the bathroom going. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so what we got here is we got our we got our IPA glasses. Do you want to touch them? Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, Derek asked me an interesting question earlier. He's full of questions because he has never brewed beer before and. He uh, has you haven't really reviewed a beer, have you? He just likes to drink beer. <laughs> and more specifically, craft beer, because he finds that those taste better. Correct. Okay, good. We're on the same page. So now we're going to try this triple IPA, correct? Actually, um, the guy at the store told me it was a triple IPA. Unfortunately, the gentleman that sold this to me is not up on his beer. See... I go to this wine and craft beer store, and the owner is this old dude. How old is he? Probably in his 60s. Okay. He's a big wine connoisseur. He loves his wine. He knows his wine. He knows everything about wine, wine making. Plus, he's Italian. And he's Italian. His son's Anthony. What's his old man's name? Can't tell you. I just know the last name. I mean, he just goes drinking with them. <laughs> So anyways, these two guys, the father and the son, own a wine and craft beer store. The, the father actually wanted to just have a wine making, oh, not a wine making store, a, uh, just a wine store. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about your $2 bottle of wines, we're talking about how much now? The creme de la creme of yeah. wine. The, 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 the good stuff. Yeah, the $25 a bottle for it. And then, um, I guess he got to knowing a guy here in town that runs a bar and they, um, he serves most of the craft beers there because he's a big, he's a beer snob and he loves his craft beers, the good stuff. So the two of them got together along with the son and they decided to bring in the craft beer. Now the old man doesn't want to have anything to do with the craft beer because he doesn't know anything about the craft beer. However, the owner of the bar and the son of the owner of the wine store got together and decided just to bring in all this craft beer, which is awesome. And they don't have a lot of room for it, but the room that they do have for it, they brought in all sorts of goodies. They got sours, they've got lagunitas, and they've got the palate wrecker. The palate wrecker. By the way, check out this awesome tattoo my wife gave me today. Yep. That's a car, yes. It's a car from the movie Cars. Yes. My dog's behind me and I almost fell over. <laughs> 
I'm not even drunk yet. I thought you were dancing. Dancing? He's excited to open the, the IPA. <laughs> All right, so um, Derek, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the bottle. What I like to do is I love to smell what's in the bottle. Sounds good. And um, after we open it, we pour it. We judge how it pours, how much head we get, um, how it looks in the light, how clear it is, the color. Um, then we smell it from the glass, what we get from it. Um, then we uh, drink it. And that would be a review of the beer. That'll be a review of the beer. All right. So. Nice. Let's uh, pour this for you here. I'm pouring my friend some beer. Yes, I am. Now, it looks like to me that it poured pretty well. Uh, yes, it did. So Derek wanted to know, as I go back to my question, because I got off topic, Derek wanted to know why there are so many different glasses for different kinds of beer. And the fact about it is that each glass will bring out different characters in the beer. What kind of glass do you use while drinking an IPA? This glass. This glass. This is an IPA glass. It really brings out the hops. The bitterness with a nice mix of the malt to give you that full IPA blast. Okay. So uh, here it is. So now the first step was to see it pour. Now the next step to it, reviewing a beer is it poured very nicely. I forgot to smell it out of the bottle because I was so eager. <laughs> So we smell out of the glass? Smell it out of the glass, man. Mm. It's a lot of hops it's, in there. It's, it's so strong. Usually you don't get a good smell through such a thick head. Mm -hmm. It just poured so nicely that the head is so thick. And it's an off-white head, too. It's not white. It's, right. It's like, like, like a cream color. Yeah, cream. Mm -hmm. Creamy. Like tan. And uh, we got a nice golden body, don't we? Yep. Nice and see through in the light. And uh, would you say good carbonation? Oh yeah, it was really bubbly when I when you first poured it in the glass. Very bubbly. The bubbles aren't too big; they're just about right, about that small. All right. So uh, that's very aromatic. Very aromatic. 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 Is that what you say? Okay. Aromatic. Aromatic. <laughs> the aroma is powerful. <laughs> it's powerful. It smells great. I'm getting a lot of, uh, I smell a lot of citrus. Mm -hmm. I'd have to agree on that. It's not a lot of earthy notes in there. Uh, I think they used a lot of citrusy hops, the seas. I got some uh, background on this beer. Why don't you stay there, Derek, and entertain them. I will. Now, is this a local brewing company, do you know, around here? Or? No, this company is based out of California, actually. Okay. Ah, uh, la 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 la. California. It's the Green Flash, Green Flash Brewing Company. Okay. Uh, Hamilton's Ale, it was actually brewed for the anniversary of Hamilton, if I recall correctly. And the beer was such a good hit that they decided to make more of it. Whoa! Nice hey. catch. Yeah, thank you. Ah, uh, la la la. San Diego, California. Mm hmm. So, uh, let's see. I can't remember. Oh, uh, it says what? The, the alcohol content is about 9.5%. 9.5 by volume. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see here. Uh, it was originally brewed for the Hamilton's Tavern second anniversary celebration. It's the most complicated West Coast inspired IPA we have brewed. So they mash and sparge with hopped wort. Now you're probably wondering what that is, Derek. Yes, I okay. have no idea what you just said. So hopped wort. 
what they do is they uh, they mash in and then actually they say mashed and hop wort yeah mm -hmm. okay so that means that they put some hops in with the mash oh so in their little green this little contraption there that they put the hops in they probably mix the hops in with the the grist and then put it in there with the water and then they get the hops in with the grist uh, okay and then what they do is they probably somehow i doubt that they would put the hops in their hot liquor tank they probably have some sort of filter where they run the hot liquor tank water out through a hop filter okay and then sparge that way sparging remember Sparging is the rinsing of the grains. So what they're doing is they're rinsing the grains as they're draining the mash with more water, which has been run through hops. So that's my opinion of what they do. I don't know because I didn't look it up, honestly. That's just what I think they might have done. So we got a West Coast inspired IPA. The IBU is over 100. And as we all know, when it gets over 100, it's very hard to distinguish, you know, the bitterness. You know, it's, it's just going to be bitter. Yeah. So, um... Let's see, in 2012, the World Beer Cup it won the bronze medal for Imperial IPA. Oh, okay. I have found that out by doing some research. Nice. So we got some background, we got the pour, we got the aroma of the hops. It smells bitter. It smells very amazing and it citrusy. Does. It does. Wanna taste it? Let's do this. All right. You can actually tell from the, the we got really nice glaze, uh, lacing on the glass already. The head's gone down a little bit, but it's still there. Sure. And uh, you can just tell that the lacing's good. That's a good sign of the uh, um, the body of the beer and the proteins and everything. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Mmm. Cheers. <clears throat> That's, uh, that's making a statement for sure. Oh. That's very hoppy. Oh, yeah, man. Oh. <laughs> it just, it really is a palate record because right now, all I can taste is hops. Mm-hmm. It does, even the aftertaste. So bitter that it's messing up my speech. <laughs> I just can't stop doing this. <laughs> okay, so yeah. even the aftertaste, it's just all hops. It's just hops. It's good though. All right, now I'm thinking it's not all citrus hops. I don't think so. I'm getting citrus notes with a hint of spiciness. When it hits the back of my mouth, it's like um, spicy earthy. So they could have used some earthy hops in there. It's just when it comes to the aroma, you get all that citrus. You get more of the citrus. Right. But then the malt. Mmm. All right, now that, now that the hops have coated my entire mouth, mm -hmm. and I'm used to the flavor. It's a little more smoother. Smooth. Yep. Very smooth. This is what I would call a light, a light to a medium body. It's not super thin. It's not watered down. It's almost perfect. Um, Mm. So now with the body, body goes back to the whole mash temperature and uh, any sugars they might have added. So if it would have been like a medium, you said what was that? One hundred and fifty-four. Yeah, your temperature. Well, one hundred and fifty-four would be a medium body if they wanted a medium body for mashing. Gotcha. Look at that lacing. It's still there. Look at that lacing.
So I'm, I'm getting a nice malt flavor, even in the finish. It really is well balanced. They, they said that uh, it's a well balanced um, between the uh, malt and the heavy hop additions. Now I see still a lot of carbonation. Is there anything specific in that or like do you want it to stay for a long time or is there... The longer the better. Okay. So this still being very, very, I don't know if you can see it. It's probably, probably really hard to pick up but there's still a lot of carbonation happening. I got a flashlight. But it doesn't work! <laughs> what? Uh, this wait. is 2014. Oh yeah, why don't we get the phone out? Yep. Ralph Bennett, if you're watching this, use your cell phone, man. Can we see this? Is it working? I don't know. Yeah, you can kind of see it. A uh, little bit. Oh. There we go. There it's showing it is. up. So that's pretty. That's. I mean, would you say that's the same when you poured it? I mean, yeah, it's about about the same. It's pretty. The active. bubbles are still about the same size, which is nice for this kind of beer because you don't want to chug this kind of beer. If you chug this kind of beer, you might die. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> or 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 you probably you know. If uh, some people were to come over to your house and you started drinking this beer about an hour, no, half an hour before they came over, they'd walk in and you'd be turned into a hop cone. You're right. And here's the other thing, it, it really tastes good. You don't want to rush this beer, if that makes sense. Ooh. You can enjoy this beer. This is a great beer for all year round, except I would definitely drink it more in the summer or springtime. Mm -hmm. It's winter time right now. It's actually February. February. Yep. Isn't that a weird name for a month? Yeah, it's kind of like a stepchild. That's why it sometimes only has 20. That's why it's so of, short. Yeah. Nobody likes it. <laughs> Nobody even likes saying the word February. Yep. So, but so you would you would really. Uh, uh, what does Christopher Walken think of this beer? I don't know. He's near my belly. <laughs> he goes and he says, I, I, want, I, I want some more. Yeah. Would you recommend this then for an IPA? I would recommend this beer. If you love IPAs, you love double IPAs. Grab this beer. Or an Imperial, it. correct? Mm. Imperial IPA. Okay. Imperial IPA just means it's going to be... A huge beer. Gotcha. Imperial. Just like America. <laughs> As opposed to metric. <laughs> then we can call it a metric IPA. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's not accurate. I don't know. Be standard. So how would you rate this beer on a... Okay, how about this? On a 1 to 5 scale. 1 to 5 on the pour. Okay. Me? Yeah. Um, I thought it poured really, really well. Um, but, uh, to be honest, I have not really noticed that, other than the stouts. I know you're supposed to pour those pretty hard, right? You get a nice thick head on it. Yep. Um, but I thought it poured really good, so I would probably give it a three or four. Ooh. Three or four? Yeah, I'd give it about a 4.5. Oh, okay. Okay. So, head? Head sticking around. I give that a, a five. Okay. Because I love I love the the color of it. I love how it didn't hot, it, it really helped give off the hops. It might also be this glass because this glass. I used to drink IPAs out of a Pilsner glass. Mm -hmm. And then when I got these for Christmas, changed my world. Gotcha. Uh, I would say probably the same because this hasn't really gone down since you poured it. It's been pretty much the same since. Um, it was poured, so yep. I would agree. Color and clarity. I give it a five. I give it a five on clarity. It's crystal clear. Mm -hmm. Color. Um, I like my IPAs this color. I don't like them super pale. And I don't like them dark. Gotcha. And, well, then again, I really haven't had dark IPAs, so I can't talk. So ignore that last part. <laughs> Edit. 
Uh, <laughs> I would say clarity as well. It, it is pretty, I mean, you can see right through it. Um, it's got a reddish tint to it, um, which looks good. I would have to give it fives as well. Flavor, taste. For an IPA, hoppy? <laughs> mm. Would be an understatement. Yeah, that's more in the bitterness category. On bitterness, it's it's a five. I mean, there's no, it's, it's just bitter. Yeah, you're right. If they didn't call it the palate wrecker, they would have definitely called it the bitter bastard. <laughs> I would have. Bitter son of a bitch. Yep. It's uh, definitely strong for that point. Flavor. Definitely bitter. And it's complexion. It's balancing of hops and malt. I would give it a four because the hops are still overpowering, but you can still taste the malt. I mean, it's nice. It's a nice right. mixture, but I give it a four because it's just... Right. You... Might as well just open up a packet of hops and put them in your mouth. I would I would agree because even though after we take a, took a couple sips, you still get that hop flavor, but a little more of the malt comes out after that. But yeah, oh. I don't have to do anything with the four. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's our review of the Palette Wrecker Green Flash Brewing Company handcrafted ales. Now did our Tali have a lot of those on the shelf? Oh yeah. Good. That's the name of the store we go to. It's called Artali. A-R-T-A-L-E. I'm sure that's Italian. Mm -hmm. Since the owner's Italian. And that's on Spring Creek and... So on Perry. Spring Creek Road uh, in Perryville. For anybody who's in my area of the Rockford area, go there. You'll be amazed. You walk in, all you're going to see is wine right away. Craft beer is in the way back. You could ask for Anthony or uh, what's the what's the guy from uh, Kryptonite's name? It starts Kryptonite. with an A. I want to say it's Alex. Yeah. But uh, those two guys, Anthony or don't quote me, Alex. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna call him Alex. Next time I see him, I'm just gonna call him Alex. And if I'm right, hey. If I'm wrong, I'm sure he won't care because I'm still buying beer from him. Right. Uh, and then also Artali has a lot of beer tasting. So if you wanna, you know, keep posted and keep track of that because I know they have quite a bit of beer tasting throughout the year. So. All right. Okay, so thank you for joining us. And uh, cheers. Cheers. Mm. That's good, man. That's good stuff.